Okay, go for it. Thank you. A bird ola which which one made above in the manner of an ola offering, the designation of an ola is valid. If he made it in the manner of an ola offering for the designation of a katos, it is valid, but it is not credited to the owner. In the matter of a katos offering for the designation of ola, or in the matter of a katos offering for the designation of katos, it is invalid. If you made it below in any of these matters, it's invalid. And all of them do not contaminate with tuma via the throat, but one is subject to the laws of mila on their account, except for the bird katos, which was made below in the matter of a katos offering for the designation of a katos. If a bird ola was made below in the matter of a katos offering for the designation of a katos, Rabbi Eliezer says one is subject to Me'ila on its account, but Rabbi Shua says one is not subject to Me'ila on its account. Rabbi Eliezer says Rabbi Eliezer, if a katos offering which is not subject to Me'ila when it has been offered for its own designation is nevertheless subject to Me'ila when one changes designation, then an older offering which is subject to Me'ila when it is offered for its own designation should surely be subject to Me'ila when it changes designation. Says Rabbi Shua to him, not so. If this can be said of a katos offering whose designation one changed to an ola, it is because it has changed its designation to something which is subject to me'ila. Can the same be said of an ola offering whose designation once changed to a katos, in which case he has changed his designation to something which is not subject to me'ila? Said Rabbi Eliezer to him that most holy offerings which one slaughtered in the southern part of the courtyard which he, and which he slaughtered are the lower less lower holiness designation serve as proof, and that he has changed the designation to something not subject to me'ila, and yet they are subject to me'ila. So too, you should not want to add an older offering that even with one change the designation to something not subject to me'ila, it nevertheless remains subject to me'ila. Said Rabbi uh, Yeshua to him, not so. If this can be said of most holy offerings which one slaughtered in the southern part of the courtyard, and which he slaughtered for lesser holiness designation, is because he changed the designation to something which has forbidden parts and permissible parts. Can you say the same for an old offering whose designation was changed to something which is entirely permissible? If he formed the liquor with the left hand at night, or he slaughtered oh. the night, no, that's it. Yeah. Right? Okay. The hay is, for, is mine. Right. Okay. okay. So now, Mishnah Hay is, uh, is a little bit of a tricky one. Okay, and you got to you got to watch this one closely. We're trying to work out now if because because Malika, Malika is quite a, an interesting little anomaly in halacha. Right, normally when you when you shecht, if you if you take kodshim out the picture, when you do shechita, what do you do? You take a knife, you shecht the animal from the front of the neck, and uh, and that makes it kosher. Malika is exactly the the opposite. It's like you're not using a knife. Your coin's using his thumbnail. And he's not shechting from the front of the neck, he's shechting from the back of the neck. Now, normally, such a thing would, would render a bird a novella. And not, not just not kosher, but, but like novella legamre. And novella meaning that it's even going to be mitame. Um, okay, so, by the way, you'll see that in this Mishnah over here, mitame vabesa blia, that's code for novella. Okay. So novella is a, is an is a bird is is an in any creature that died without a, without a proper shechita. Okay, okay, now we're gonna we got to we are gonna see various different versions of malika's gone wrong, or shechita's gone wrong, and we want to find out like what uh, does this make this does this make the creature into a novella or not? Okay, so it's possible, it's a puzzle, but does the creature but but does it now become a novella? Is it now matame if, if if a person swallows it? Okay, so the the distinction that we're going to that we're going to make over here and i'm going to i'm going to jump to the conclusion over here because otherwise we're going to be very confused reading these different cases and trying to understand why is this one novella and this one is not so i'm going to jump ahead of the, and, and give you and give you my my reasoning over here which isn't it isn't spelled out exactly in the mishnah in the, in these terms but this is how i understand it so if the psul in malika is caused because um, because of uh, of a problem with because of, a, of of an, of an existing problem that this malika could never work even if you did it right. Then it's a it's a psul in the then it's a psul in the malika altogether, and therefore it's uh, and therefore it'll be an availer. But what do, mean, what do you mean if you did malika even right? But it's but, but... that that you know. It, it, if it's if it's a psul, 
in the malika itself. Okay, that means you're going to have a novella. But if the psul came about for a different reason, that's not that, that that's that's sort of external to the malika itself. Then we're going to find that even though it's puzzle, it's not going to be a novella. Let let's jump into this and uh, and and see and see how this how this is, uh, principle is going to apply. So if he does this, if he does the malika with his left hand, he's supposed to do it with his right hand. Or Belila, he did it at night when malika is never kosher. Okay. Shachat chulin bifnim. Or he shechted um, a, a chulin animal in the in, inside the Azara, which you're not allowed to do. The kodshim bachutz, or, or he shechted a kodshim animal with a, with a knife outside the outside the Azara. Einan mitamin beves hablia. So even though these are possible ways of of um, of of, of, of shechting the animal, it's nonetheless it's not because there was something wrong with the way he did the malika or with the subject of the malika. It's just because there was a technicality. He did it at night. He did it with the wrong hand. He did it in the wrong place. But these are these are technicalities of why you did it wrong. But nonetheless, the action itself. Is still is still a kosher is still a kosher shchita action. Okay. On the other hand, malak besakin. If he did the malika with a knife, that's not a malika. Malak chulin bifnim. Or he if he did a malika on a chulin bird inside the azara, even if it's inside the azara, malika on a chulin bird is not a is not a shchita. Okay. Um, the kod shim bechutz. Or he did or he did a malika on a bird outside the azara. It's another interesting thing because that's not uh, somehow outside doing the malika outside is not just a technicality or uh, uh, it's just that malika only works inside the azara. It, now the, and I want to contrast that with doing it at night. Was like he did the malika at night inside the azara. The time the time is not something that says that okay malika can't ever work at night. Uh, it's just it's just that Malika you you did it at the wrong time. You, it, it's the place that's uh, that's really Kobe and not the time. Okay, so so if he did, but if he did Malika on the on the on the Kodshim outside, also no, no, not it's going to be a novella. Torin shelohi gias manan. Now what about a turtle dove that's too young? He, 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 it's not yet it's not yet kashalam is So now this what you're basically doing is Malika on a bird that's not kashalam is so that malika automatically cannot work. It's not just a technicality. It's that you're doing a malika on, on an animal that can't be kashed by a malika. Well, malika could be perfect. It didn't do anything uh, wrong. So that the bird is too young. But the, your bird, but the bird is too young. Or or b'nei yonashe avos manan. Or conversely, the uh, young doves. Well, the the b'nei yona that now are too old. So by the same principle, it's a bird that cannot be kashed lemizbeach, and therefore doing malika on it. Is uh, is not is not going to be a shchita. Shchita only works on birds that can that can that are kashalim is beach. Okay, or sheyavash gapa, or other psulim in the bird. We're, we're, now normally we don't we, 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 when we talk about mumim, we're talking about mum. Uh, a mum is something that applies to a behema. Um, okay, but uh, but we've got um, uh, but with birds, there's no there, there's no concept of a mum with a bird, but what you do have is a chaser. Are you still there? Yes, you're still there. Um, what we do have is chaser. If a, if a bird is mamish missing a limb, that's also going to be possible for the mizbeach. So here we're talking about a bird that whose wing is uh, it, it has has dried up, um, or she nismes. I know its its eye has been not just blinded but but removed. It's 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 missing an eye. She nikta aragla. It's it's missing a leg. It's possible for the mizbeach. From the from the get go and doing a malika on it means that you you just killed the shechita. Metame beveis ablia zeaklal. So now the Mishnah gives its rule. Kol shehaya psula bekodesh ena metame beveis ablia. If if the reason why it's psul is because of a a, a, um, a rule in kodshim, shehaya psula bekodesh. Let's just see how Kahati explains this over here. Um, it became psul before it came. If it if it became puzzle before it came to the azara, for example, missing a limb or it's the it's the wrong age of bird or uh, right anything the, then it's malika is not a malika and therefore it therefore it, it's like ilu you um you just killed it uh, you know ripped its head off okay that's a novella right. okay cool. oh sorry big big pardon hold on no no I, I, I read that wrong I read that wrong. Kosher hapsula bekodesh. I beg your pardon. Anything that's the, if it's a if it's an 
if it was a, a, a kosher bird for a korban, and it, and it, and it had a psul inside inside the kodesh. Sorry, I, I was looking at the wrong kahati uh, uh, inside there. So something where the psul happened inside the kodesh because it was done at night, because it was done with the left hand. Okay, but it was uh, but the psul the psul was uh, was not evident beforehand. That makes it uh, that makes it kosher lemizbeach. Uh, sorry, that makes it that makes it not not in Zayla. Okay, lo haya psula If the if the psul came out came about before it came into the into the mikdash, for example, it's too young, it's it's missing a limb, um, or it was done outside. Um, all of these things are or these things become become nevela. And if you had a Yisrael who came in and it's, and the Yisrael said, oh, you know, I'm allowed to do shechita on a on a behema. Right, he's allowed to to shecht kodeshim. Uh, Yisrael is allowed to do do, do shechita on kodeshim. So he says, well, why why don't I do malika as well? So he, so the Yisrael came and did a malika on the on a bird. Malika san pesula the einan metamos bebeis ablia. So again, it's not it's not an avela because it's just a technicality that the Yisrael is not allowed to do malika. But the malika the etz and the action was was fine. It was done in the kodesh. It was done uh, you know karaoi on on the right kind of bird. It's just that. It was done by Yisrael instead of by a coin. It was done it, like it could have been done at night as well, and it would also have been puzzle, but it's not a right. novella. Okay. Now, here comes a uh, here comes another really interesting discussion. Malak um, trefa. You do malika, and you find that the bird is a trefa. Okay. Now, the difference between a novella and a trefa is tuma. Okay. Let's just push put birds aside for the moment. Let's talk about a behema. A, per, a, a behema of Cholin, and somebody does somebody does a shechita on a on a on a cow, and uh, and they open it up and they find that the lung is punctured. Oh, it's a trefa. We're not allowed to eat it, mm. but it's not tame. It's a novella is tame if you if you touch it or pick it up or whatever. But if you shecht it, if if you shecht it and it turns out to be a trefa, it's asked to eat, but there's no tuma. And that everyone everyone is masking to that. That's a din. That's a din Torah. That with the behema that was shechted and uh, that was shechted kosher, but it's but it's a trefer. Okay, it's that's uh, that's uh, there's, there's no tumor over there. Now mm -hmm. we're going to jump to the question of if if a coin did a malika, and opened up the bird, and it turns out that it's that, that it's a trefer. You, you see something inside the bird, and and, and he sees oh this bird is uh, not kosher. Let me but the question now is: Does this bird have tuma? Is it does it does it get rescued from the tuma of a novella? Just like a okay. So Rabbi Meir says, well, obviously, It also is it, it's it, it it it's a trefer, yeah, but it's not tame. Rabbi Yehuda Meir matama bevesablia. Rabbi Yehuda says, nope, this is uh, this is this is a novella. I'm a Rabbi Meir, but come on, let's do some logic over here. Ma im nivlas behema shehi matama b'maga of a masa. We've got we know that a behema, if you had a if you have a a, a behema that died with a novella as a novella, right? It, it's 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 a serious tumor. If you if you touch it or even if you carry it, you become tame from this novella. Shchita sam taher says treifa sam tumasa. But if it got a a, a proper shchita, even if it turns out to be a treifa, it's still not a novella. It's still not tame. Now let's talk about a bird. If you did a shechita on a bird, and the bird turned out to be a trefa, because the bird because bird tuma is much much lighter than than behemoth tuma. Bird tuma doesn't happen if you just touch it or carry it. You have to actually swallow it to become tame from it. So it's a much lighter form of tuma. And if shechita if if shechita can can be metaher a behemoth, then for sure it can be metame a bird, metaher a bird. Okay. Okay. So, so now it says Rabbi Meir, we've, I've just proved to you from a kalva chomer that shchita is going to make a, a bird uh, is going to make a bird um, a tahor. It's not even if it's a trefer, it's not going to be tame. Now, just like now, now he jumps to a, to a second limud and he says we're going to do a mamatzinu. Uh, just like he's going to say shchita. Outside is like Melika inside. 
אוקיי? מה מצינו בשחיטס שהיא מכשרת באכילה, הוא מטהר את אסטרפסה מטומסה, אף מיליקס שהיא מכשרת באכילה, תטהר את אסטרפסה מטומסה. So he says, just like שחיטה is something that, that is מכשיר bird for, for eating, also removes from it the טרפס, so מיליקה is מכשיר the bird for, for eating, and, it's, uh, and it will also remove any, any din of tumma, if it's, even if it turns out to be a trafer. So this is Rabbi, this is Rabbi Meir. Okay? Rabbi Yehuda doesn't accept this. Rabbi Yossi comes and takes a compromised position in the middle. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Daya, Kenev Las Behema. He says, you can, you can go only so far. You can do, you can do the Kalva Chomer to, to a bird, to a bird with shchita, shchita sa metaharta avalo melika sa. Says you can learn it onto shchita, but you can't, you can't extend the principle further onto melika. So you've got three opinions over here in summary. Rabbi Yehuda doesn't accept the limud at all. Of uh, he, he says that even shchita on a on a bird, even shchita on a bird, if it turns out to be a trafer, then it's an avela. He says that that's only the Torah is only talking about a behema, and a bird remains remains tame. Uh, Rabbi Yossi takes the middle position and says any shechita is matar whether a, whether it's a behema or an, or a or a bird. Um, and Rabbi Meir says everything is tahor. Again, the halacha follows Rabbi Yossi the middle path. So if 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 a coin did malika on a bird and it turns out to be a trefer, then it is also considered an avela. Okay. Perik ches kol hazvachim shenis arvu bechat taos hamesos. All right, so now we have to deal with the subject of um, of a chatas that has to die. Okay, there's there, there's several categories. Do you, do you need to? Do you need, yeah, yeah, yeah. need a break? Right here. Ah. So there are um, there are five different categories of a chatas that has to die. Okay, um, and the, we, where you can't do anything with it, it has to be it has to be just locked up and left to starve. Okay, right. so if a chatas if a chatas animal became uh, became pregnant and gave birth, it's 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 young, cannot be used for anything. Okay, then there's tamura's chatas. If somebody did tamura on a chatas, also it is um, in other words, he tried to swap an animal, then the, then the one that he tried to swap for it, it takes on the kedusha of the chatas, but you can't but you can't do anything with it. Right. Okay. If you have, if, if somebody designated an animal for a chatas and then the owner died, okay. So the, 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 the animal got lost and then he designated another animal and offered it up. And now they found the first one. Okay. It's too late for it. it, it nothing can happen with it. Okay. Or a chatas animal, uh, animal that, uh, that became too old to be sacrificed. Okay. So all of these things are chatas that have that uh, that has to be left to die, and now it got mixed up with other uh, with other korbanos. So now normally when we have a mix up thing, we say okay, is there din of bittul? Can we say how many of them do we have to do we have to get mixed up before we can say okay, it's avad uh, or whatever, however much bittul. But uh, we don't say that because because of behemah, each behemah. <laughs> Is so chashuv. It doesn't matter how many. You can have ten thousand animals, but uh, that that one that one chatas that uh, that that got mixed up in there is uh, ca cannot be nullified, right? Or if it was, uh, or if, if you take instead of chatas uh, a mate, uh, a chatas that has to die, you can have a shor aniskal, a, 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 an ox that was sentenced to be stoned. I feel like that baribo, even one in ten thousand, yeah, musa kulam. Then you have to leave all of them to die because there's nothing you can do with them. Nis arvu b'shor shen ne evda bo avera. Now, what happens if the animal that got mixed up was uh, was an was a shor that was that had a that had an avera done with it, which is probably bestiality, or shehemi says a adam or one that killed a, a person alpi edechad that had only one witness against it, so it's not actually sentenced to sentenced to die. Or Al Pibahabalim, or if the, the owners confessed that uh, that the animal killed somebody, but Rovava nearby, an animal that was used for bestiality or that performed an act of bestiality on a woman, Uva Mukse uh Mukse is uh, it was um it was, had been set aside for a Vodazora or it was actually worshipped for Nevad, but Esnan it was exchanged for a for a prostitute's hire, Uva Mahir it was or it was exchanged for a uh, for a dog. Ubikilaim. Or um, it was it's a cre it's um 
the offspring of a goat and a sheep. Um, or it was an animal that was uh, that's a trefer, or an dolphin, or an animal born by caesarean. Yer Now all of these, so, uh, all of these psalim are not animals that need to be left to die. They're just animals that are possible for the mizbeach. So what you do, you have to leave them. You have to leave them to pasture until they develop a mum. Once they've developed a mum, you redeem them. You sell them. Um, and then you can take you say what's the most valuable animal from there and use that money to bring uh, to bring the korban that you need to. If these animals got mixed up in um, in regular chulin, chulin that is that is the Israel is back. And then let the then let the the chulin animals be sold. To people who uh, who need so let's say one of the one of the, some some culture animal so let's say an animal that had been designated for an ola got mixed up in a whole bunch of of chulin animals then what he has to do is he has to sell all of these chulin animals to people he kind of he kind of stand by the harabais and say listen do you need an ola do you need an ola and he has to sell all these animals to people who need an ola okay. And uh, that's where we end for for today. It was a, we did a lot of uh, uh, you know it was quite uh, some fairly complicated mishnayos over here. So I don't think we're going to be able to do all of our chazars, but let's do what we can. Um, okay, valid base. Okay. Uh, all offerings whose blood is applied to the inner altar, if it admitted any of the applications, he has not effected atonement. Therefore, if you apply all of them properly and one improperly, it is invalid, but it bears no chorus. These are the things for which one is not responsible for pigle, the comets, frankincense, uh, a frankincense, incense, minka offering of kohanim, minka offering of the anointed kohanim, the libation, minka offering of blood, and libation offerings which are brought separately. These are the words of Rameya, but the comments say even those which are brought with the animals. The oil, log of oil of the mitzora, the Shri of Shimon says one is not liable for pigle. Rameya says one uh, says one is liable for a pigle. Because the blood of the Asham offering renders it permissible, and whatever is a permitted off substance, whether to people or to alter what is liable for it in pigle. The Ola offering of blood renders, in the most, uh, renders its meat more permissible to burn upon the altar. Rabbi Shimon says, whatever is not, oh, that's wrong. And it's highest to the Kohan, Kohanim. The bird Ola, its blood renders its meat permissible to burn upon the altar, and the bird Katas, its blood renders its meat permissible to the Kohanim. The bulls which are burned and the he goats which are burned. Their blood renders their sacrificial parts permissible for offering upon the altar. Rabbi Shimon says, whatever is not offered on the outer altar, like the plumbing, one is not liable for it for pickle. Okay. Okay. Boss. Gimel. He used to say, do not be scornful of any person uh, and do not disregard anything, for you have no person without his hour and you have no thing without its place. But Levitas, the leader of Yavna, says, Be exceedingly humble in spirit, for the anticipated end of moral man is worms. And the Yokanam Ben Broca says, Whatever, Whoever desecrates the name of heaven in secret, they will exact punishment from him in public. Unintentional and intentional both um, are disregarded in the desecration of the name. Rabbi Yisrael said of Rabbi Yokanam Ben Broca, one says, One who studies Torah in order to teach is given the means to study and to teach. But one who studies Torah and order to practice is given the means to study and to teach and observe and to practice. The Sadiq says, what, do not make the words of, of Torah into a crown in order to be glorified through them, nor a spade uh, with which to dig. Uh, with which to dig. Okay. So um, tell her, right? So, so yeah, tell her, used to say, yeah. and one who makes use of this crown will pass away. From this you will derive whoever seeks personal benefit from the words of Torah removes his life from this world. Okay, Marcos. Okay. Marcos Hey. If others came and they just discredited them, and still others came and they discredited them, two, even 100, all of them are executed. Rabbi Huda says this is a group of plotters, and only the first group is executed. Zolan and witnesses are not executed under the verdict that has been delivered. But the seducers say, unless he has been executed, as it is said, a life for a life, the sage said to them, has it not already stated, and you shall do to him as he plans to do to his brother, indicating that his brother is still alive? If so, why does it say a life for a life? Because it might be thought that from this, from the time of the testimony is accepted, and they may be executed. The Torah therefore states a life for a life to teach that they are not executed unless a verdict has been issued. 
as I am. By the testimony of two witnesses or three witnesses, shall the, the one who is to die be put to death? Now, if the testimony may be established by two, why does the scripture testify by three? It is compared three to two, just as three can be credited two, so can two, so can two discredit three. How would you know that this is true even for 100? To teach this, safe, to teach this it saves witnesses. Uh, Reb Shimon says, just as two are not executed unless both are proven as Zoma men, so three are not executed unless the three of them are, are proved to be Zoma men. Just as with two, if one of them is found to be a kinsman or a qualified witness, disqualified witness, the testimony is void. And so too, so too with three. If one of them is found to be a kinsman and the disqualified witness, the witness is... Hold on, hold on, you're, you're already on to Chet, right? Yeah, I'm... Yeah, that's too far. Okay. And let's stop there because i got to... Get going. Okay. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Okay.